Hello, Jingo developers. I'm excited to bring to you another interesting Ultimate Jingo REST Framework authentication course. In this tutorial, we are going to be building a complete JSON Web Token Authentication REST API service, which contains everything you need for a real time REST API authentication service, including registering a new user, logging a user, log out a user, email verification with OTP, password reset, and also we'll also be implementing social authentication which include authenticating with Google and authenticating with GitHub and maybe Facebook. And one interesting thing is we're going to be reading this without using any of the popular third party authentication package that the Jingo Rest Framework provides. We are going to be reading this with just Jingo Rest Framework and the Jingo Rest Framework simple JWT. All right, so this is going to be a complete authentication package that you can easily customize to your need. We are going to be using the custom user model and just use integrate it into your own project. And secondly, we are also going to be integrating it with a React front end that you can already see in your screen now. Uh, we are going to be building React uh, front end to test out our uh, APIs. And lastly, you're also going to be learning how to effectively use refresh token in the front end because our access token is going to be short lived. So our refresh token is going to automatically re refresh our access token using the Asios interceptor. All right, so we're going to be doing a lot in this authentication service. It's just a complete authentication module that you can integrate into your project. It's going to be a fun time with you guys. All right, so if you've not subscribed to this channel, it doesn't cost you money to subscribe. Please subscribe to help the channel grow. And also give this video a thumbs up. All right, I've already had a basic Django application set up. Nothing too much, just to speed up development time and not to bore you with the need to have them be installing Django creating virtual environment and all that. So I went before time to create a virtual environment. All right, in any choosing folder of your choice, I'm going to install Django, Django REST framework, and the Django REST framework simple GWT, I mean. I've created a simple Django project called uh, Django REST Auth. I also create just two app. We have our account app and the social account app created. So if you check our requirement of TST file, you see the package that we've installed, just Django, Django course header, Django environment, and Django REST and Django REST work simple JWT. So these are the basic we've done. We've installed them already. We have if you go to our settings file, let's see what we've done in our settings. Basically, we just added the Django REST framework and we added the account app, the social account app, the course header and also the course header middleware which is here as this part of it so these are the basic setup that i have done so we're going to pick up from here so firstly before we start creating our custom user model i want to quickly set up our environment um, file all right environment file is actually used to keep sensitive data secret while we create environment variable that we can use to access to secret data all right, so we installed a package to actually handle that, which is the Django environment. So we're going to quickly set that up. Just create a .env in your root directory here. Yeah, call it .env. All right, so this is the file that we use to create and keep sensitive data. So we need to set it up so that our Django settings can actually read any kind of credentials that we put in here. So first of all, we're going to import the, go to the top of our settings file. In here, we're going to import the environment. This environment is actually coming from this package that we install, which is Jinko environment. So you know, <coughs> I'm going to import environment. Here we just bring in the variable environment equals environment.env. Debug, we set the value equals to false, we put the type here. It's just a set casting. You can get all this from the documentation of the Jingo environment. All right, next we are to set the variables to read. So we're going to say environment. And dot read this we used to read the environment file from our base file. So basically, this is all we need for our Django settings to be able to get values that will be placed here. Alright, so that's not all. Once we save this now, we just and our settings we just need to grab secret key. They will create the variable called secret key. I just said it equals to the value without the string and column. 
all right so once you save this in our settings we can easily read this one but basically just <coughs> by just calling the nv sorry in our case the nv followed by string then we'll call the which is the variable that we paste in here that's this variable here so that's that so any other credentials that need to be kept secret we can also add them like in our debug we can also take our debug arc all right setting our debug in our environment file we also create the variable of debug all right so any other files that we need to any other information that we need to bring in there we we'll take it there for now those two are okay so we can save that now and <coughs> Secondly, we'll move over to our model. We can start creating our user model. As you already know, Django comes with its own built-in user model, which allows us to log in with um, password and username, which is a session authentication. But it's uh, Django always advises us from the documentation we are advised to always create a custom user model whenever we are building a Django project. Alright, and Django provides for us two ways for actually to two ways for us to actually implement custom user model. We can use in an abstract user class or abstract based class. The abstract user class actually allows you to add on top of what the Jingle and Beauty user model already have. Probably you want to add maybe extra feeds. You can use the abstract model. But when you want to build your own user model from scratch, from bare bones, you use the abstract based class. So for this tutorial, we're going to build in our own user model from scratch. So we're going to be using the abstract base class, which we're going to import. So we're going to say from django.contrib the odds of models. You can see it's giving us a hint, abstract base class, and also we're going to import the permission missing. So what the permission missing does, if you override it, you can see it gives you a brief explanation of the permission missing. It says add feeds and method necessary to support groups and permission models using model backend all right so then we also need to import get lazy test lazy i mean so we're going to be using this so we can create our class now i'm going to call it user also which is going to inherit from the abstract base class and the permission missing so here we can start specifying the fields that we want to see in our own user model so here we define the fields that we want so it's definitely going to have an image feed which is going to be the models dot image feed here yeah, we're going to set the mouse length here we're going to make it unique so we're going to set unique we we'll say unique equals true then we're going to set the, the verbose name and the verbose name we're going to set it with the uh, scroll get lazy test which was this get test lazy that we called as underscores we're going to you find the name you can call it email address that's for the email address then we can just add a first name which is also going to be a character feed all right so the same thing for the last name you can just copy just grab this and rename it to last name change the name to last name Right, so if you have any other custom feed, maybe like the phone number, the age, or whatever you want to put there, you can also put that there. Then after that, I'm going to bring in all the Boolean feeds that is needed, like the is admin staff. So we need that. So the is admin, which is staff. Sorry, is staff is super user. Then we want to add is verified, which we're going to be using for verification. Is active, date join and last login so next we're going to create the username feed so we're going to say username feed and this is the feed that we want to use for our login so it's going to be our email feed so we want to use the email feed so then we need to specify the required feed all right so this is going to be a list so the list all want inside this list is going to be we want the First name and the last name. 
Okay, we need to set the objects which we've not created. So we're going to say object equals to our user manager. We've not created the manager yet. We'll create it shortly. Define our string representation. Let's just have that image. We can also define a custom uh, um, function uh, method to get the full name of the user. Can I guess say get full name? Sorry. Get underscore full name. And this is basically where you turn the, the full name of the user. We can use the f string and which one will pass in the self that's first name space self dot last name all right so this is going to turn the full name you remember we are going to be doing a token just in web token authentication so we're going to create a method which we're going to define as called tokens is all going to begin self but for now we're going to just give pass then this we're going to make this a property but name a property on top of the get user model or gets the full name I mean without this set so let's quickly create the user manager so I'm going to create everything for better organization I'm going to create a manager file so we're going to call it manager dot pair so create a, a manager module here we're going to define our user manager all right so let's just quickly import user manager let's say from dot manager we'll import the the user manager which we've not created managers also update it here all right so that's that so let's head over to our managers.py file and create the user manager so in here we're also going to import in some things so we're going to import from model. just want to import the base user model all right you can see it's giving us some hint then secondly we need to import validation error from exception. Is yes, we're going to import validation error. We're also going to import from jingle.call.validators. And this time, I want to import the validate underscore email. All right, so business want to validate our email feed. Then we also need the get test lazy. So let's just grab it from here. We watched it before. All right, we'll bring that in. So we are good to go. So let's create our manager class so we're going to call it user manager that's what we'll call it which is going to write on the base user manager class all right so yeah basically first of all we're going to create a simple function called email validator so this is basically going to take itself to refer to our class then the email that we want to validate so here we're going to put in the transfer block First of all, we need to pass the email first, try and pass the email to the validate email. And we're going to say accept we have a validation error. Then we want to raise a value error. All right, so we're going to use the underscore for test lazy. This is the underscore for get test lazy. Yeah, we're going to bring the test string by saying please enter a valid email this entire valid email address all right so i won't get in our validate method our validate email method so we can define our normal create user all right create underscore user method is also taking safe and takes in the email and uh, also other required fits. Remember, we have required fits and model. All right, which are the first name and last name. So we're going to pass in the first name, 
last name. Then we're also going to pass in the password and extra extra feeds. All right. So these are the arguments that we pass into this function. So first, we're going to check if the user provides an email. So we're going to say if email is provided, then we need to start our email validation by saying email. First of all, we pass into the self to normalize email. We pass in the email, and if it's a normal email, we want to call a. Remember, we call it self. We call it an email validator. We we'll call it email validator. I'm passing an email. All right. So this we make sure the email is validated. Then, if for some reason maybe the email the user did not provide an email, so we we'll say yes, an email was not provided. Then we need to raise a value error. All right. So if an email is not provided, we we'll raise a value error. User on the test test lazy, then we're gonna say an email address is required. All right, so that will be our email validation. Then next, we need to check is here if not first name. That means if the user did not provide first name, so we also want to raise a value error. So I'll just grab this. So if not user first name, that means the user did not provide this name. So we're gonna say first name is required. Same for. So here we're going to create the user by saying user equals to self dot model. All right. So here we're going to pass in the feed by saying the email we equals to our email first name equals to our first name last name just like that. Also our last name. Then we're putting the extra feeds. All right. So once we do this, we want to set our password by saying user.set underscore password. And this we want to pass in the password. All right. So this will help us hash our password. This set underscore password method. We hash the password for us. So once we do that, we want to save by saying user.save. And here we're going to say using all this and the Django documentation. You can actually see them there. So we'll say save dot underscore db all right so once we do that we want to return the user all right so this will create our user for us so next we need to quickly create the create super user all right user this is also going to take in the same parameter so we just grab this all right so so yeah we need to set some default values for the is staff is super user and is verified. So here we just say extra fit to set default for his staff. We want to say it to true. Also for his super user, we want to say it to true for his verified. So we want the super user to be verified automatically. So we want to make sure that when the user the super user is created, the his staff and his admin is are actually true. So we're going to create a very simple check. I say. So we want to get an uh, extra feed of get is staff is not true. If it's not true, we want to raise a value error says is staff must be true for admin user. Similar, similarly, we do for supervisor also. So those are the basic validation we create for, for this. So once we have this, we're going to create the user by saying user equals to self. This time we're going to use the create user. So we're going to use the create user method that we define up here. Yeah? So because we are accepting the same feed, here we're going to pass in the feeds just the way we pass them in. So passing the feed. So once we create the user, we're going to say the user dot save and say using close to self dot underscore db. So once we save the user, here we want to return the user. All right. Alright, that's all for our user manager. So we can save this and then back to this place. We can let's make sure we're importing our importation is correct. Is user manager. 
save this. So before we make our migration, we need to set the auth uh, model user to let Django know the new auth model that we want to use. We're going to set the auth user model. We're going to set it equals to our own account account.user, which is the model that we defined here. The user model, all right. So we need to save that. So so once we have that set up, so we can leave can run our migration now. Let's double check and make sure everything is alright. Alright, so this ought to be username fit, not fit. Username underscore fit. Alright, so let's check if we have any other issues. Alright, so that was the way we can make migration now. Run our migration by running Python manage spy make migration mm -hmm. all right you can see creating model user so let's migrate all right so this will create a migration for us okay so that's cool so let's create a super user let's also run vitamage.py create super create super user you see it's asking us for an email address so we can just put in admin one at gmail.com asking for first name we can just say first name is henry last name is say james password yes we want it to be created all right our spice was created successfully quickly add the model to our admin.py file right so we just quickly say from dot models we need to register it all right so we have it registered so we can start our server now and see if we can log in with our admin user run our server all right our server run perfectly well all right that means everything is fine so let's quickly to seven they want to go to the admin so you can see uh, email address is required and the password is required so if we put in the admin password and the admin sorry the admin is an uh, email and the admin password and if we log in you can see we can log in as our admin the user model is there all right so that means our user our custom user model is actually working fine so moving on from here, we're going to start working on our user serializer. So inside our account uh, app, we're going to create a serializer.py file. So serializer.py. All right. Let me see from REST framework, we want to import serializers. All right. So the first one to create a user serializer or you can call it user register serializer. Let's call it user register serializer. All right. So this is going to inherit some serializers dot order serializer. All right. So here we need to define some feeds like the password feed, which is going to be serializers char feed. This is just going to have a mass length, mass length of let's just say 68, and we can also give it a mid length of let's say 6. Once that, then here we can set the right only equals true. All right, so we want the user to be able to provide to write their password, but we don't want the password to be returned back to the user. So password should not be part of the response. So we need a password two for password validation. All right, this is also going to be chat feed when I mean password validation. I'm talking about confirm password. So this is also going to have a mass length of same 68 and mid length also same thing. And then we need to create a class meta and set the model, which is going to be our user model. We've not imported that yet, so we need to import that from that's models for the user. Here we need to set the feeds. So we want the email, the first name, then the password, and the password too. 
All right. All right. So these are basic user and register serializer. Later on, we're going to define the validate method. All right. So we'll come back to this later on. And also, we also need to create the find the create method. This realizer create method. We we'll also come back to this. But for now, let's just save this and then head back and to our view. Now we're going to create a view to register a new user. And secondly, we're going to create the model for one time password. And we're also going to create a utility functions to actually send the generated one time password to the user. So in here, we are going to import say from rest framework dot generic. We want to import the generic API view. Then also we want to import as realizer. We can see that realizers. We want to import the thing we call it user register serializer. Also let's import response say from rest framework dot response. Want to import respond object so we can start to create a we're going to be using class space view so we're going to create our register user register user endpoint so this is going to inherit from the generic api view so here we can define our serializer class which is going to be our user register serializer then we're going to define the method we want to hit which is the post method all right, so this is going to take in save. This is going to take in the request. All right, so those are the basic arguments. So here we're going to be expecting the user data, which is going to be coming from request the data. So once we get the user data from the back end, from the front end, I mean, we want to validate them through our serializer. And if they are valid, we want to save them to our database and send an email to the user, a verification code. So that's what we're going to do. So here we're going to define a variable. We'll call this variable serializer, which is going to be our self serializer class. And the data is going to be our user data. So in this case, we're going to say if serializer dot is valid, or we'll call this valid method. So this is valid method is going to trigger this our validate method here. So we're going to define basic validations here. Once we call this validate here, we can raise a session, set it to true. All right. So once we have that, we can, if it's valid, we want to call this realizer.save. All right. So we want to save the user data to our database to send an email. So we're going to say user, in this case, it's equals to realizer data. All right. That's the save data already. So here we're going to call our uh, send email function which we've not created to the user email. So the user email we're going to get from here. We are attending accessing the user email like this. So we're going to send that message there. So that's that. So once we send it, we want to return a response. Here we want to send the user object and uh, we're going to construct. Sorry, we're going to construct a message here which we're going to have the data. This is going to be our user object. Then we also want to send a message. Make an add string because we can say hi, whatever the user's name is. All right, so you can just construct your message. Okay, so that's fine. Lastly, we want to send the status code. In this case, we need to import status from REST framework. All right, so here we're going to put in the status here, which is going to be this. All right, then if for any reasons the validation fails, here we also want to return the response. All right, so that's all for we need, we've not created the send email function here. We'll create that shortly and uh, work on our serializer validate method and also our serializer create method. So in our app, in our account app, we're gonna create the URL.py file. All right, so quickly bring in the URL. Django.url will bring part. So here we set part register. So we need to also import the um, view. And also we need to bring this into our project uh, URL. So now our project URL, we just quickly bring this in. Slash, let's say version one. 
the accounts app.urls so what we need to do now we need to complete our serializers we need to create the validate method and also the create method for our serializer right here the in the validate method what we just want to do is to compare the password the two password that the user provides because that's the only validation that we do your account for at the model level all right so here we're going to get let's say the password yeah from uh, attributes this attribute requires the incoming data that the that has been passed to the validate method so empty stream is a uh, user didn't provide the password and the password two two all right so we just see if password is not equals to password two then we want to raise serializer dot validation method error sorry and the message we want to pass is just to see password do not match all right so basically that's what we want to do then once we validate that the password match you just want to return all the attributes that's what the validate is where we create the user object so at this point where you have this you can just say user equals to our user model we need to import that for not dot objects dot create not create but create user all right so in this case normally you can just put spread the dictionary object that is coming because the actual is coming as a dictionary object but we can't do it like this because the user is not just sending more and the exact and data that has been inserted into our database they are also sending extra password which is the password 2 so the password 2 is not actually going to be inserted into our database it's just for validation of the actual password to do is just enter the, uh, the data manually by setting email which will equal to the validated data email all right and similarly for the others all right so we do also for the first name the last name and the password so once we pass this we have the user objects created so what we need to do we just need to return the user that was created all right so we return the user so we are good to go what we need to do next is to set up the email verification all right so we're going to create a utility function that will help us send this email to the user so in our app in our account app sorry we're going to create a file called utis or pi all right so in here we are going to create the function to actually generate our otp and also the function to send an email all right there are a lot of ways that this otp verification can be done if you want an otp that expires at a particular time maybe that, that is short lived you can use a package called pi otp that package actually gives you a function to generate otp that expires at a particular set time all right so you can actually do that you can see that uh, method in most uh, applications on mobile phone but what we just want is a very simple lightweight uh, email verification so we are going to create a, a function that just generates a random sequence of number as an otp and send it to the user so so that users can return that number to us back so that we can actually verify that that user's email is active so first of all we're going to import the random module from python and secondly we need to import the email message from Django. So say from Django.com, it's me. What's the email message? All right. So we just basically create a simple function called generate OTP. Very simple function. I just generate to us an OTP. I just create a variable called OTP. Set on an empty string. Then basically loop. Sorry, we just loop through. Say for i in range. A range of uh, six numbers we want is six numbers so we just want to create the otp say otp plus equals then we want to be a string so it's a string of random dot run run int 
and we want to bring a random number between one and nine. Then we want to return the string. So we'll say return OTP. Like I said, this is not the best way of doing this. There is a package for it called the Empire OTP that generates an OTP for you that expires at a particular time. You can use that package. But for simplicity's sake, we just do it like this to generate a random numbers between uh, one and nine. All right. So this will give us a random number. So we need to create another utility function called um, we call this send OTP email or send code users. So this is going to take the email of the user, and here we're going to construct the email that I want to send. Two things we're going to do we're going to send the code to the user and also we're going to create a, an otp model all right so let's quickly just head to the user model below the user model we'll just create another model we'll call this one we'll call this one time password model that model and yeah this is going to have the user which is just going to be model dot one to many feet one to one sorry not one to many one to one feet all right and we want to have the code all right so we just return a string presentation of self dot user dot first name then passcode that will make me to make migration but before that we head back to the utils file so yeah we're going to construct our email we just say the subjects so yeah, we're gonna say passcode for email verification. Yeah, we want to get the OTP code called the generate OTP code. So this is actually going to return for us the OTP code. All right. So once we have the OTP codes, we want to get the user. So we're going to say user, which is going to be import our user model dot object. We going to import that also. Dot get. This time, I want to get user when the image is equal to the image that was provided. Remember, we are passing an image to this function. So, this will actually give us the user wanting to import our user model, model and also the one time password model. So, we have our user. This actually we can get our domain name, but we can just give it the name authenticate.com. So, here we create the email body. So, we can just say email body. This will just be a simple a string. So can you create a simple say hi user dot username because we're creating the user already and then we say thank you for signing up button the on our site as the site name please verify your email with the one time passcode so we'll put the passcode here so you can construct a better uh, message from underscore email which the email is going to send this we're going to get this on our settings so we're going to say settings dot default email so we need to import settings I'm going to say settings dot default from email. No, we've not bring in our email settings. We bring that shortly. So once we have our email body, we have a um, from email. We have the subject. Then we can create the one time password. We're going to say one time password dot object dot create. Create the user. All right. Generate the OTP in our database. And once we do that, we want to also send the email. We're going to say going to call the email so we're going to say pass in email message and we'll pass in the parameters also. then the two email sorry the two email need to be a list so that's all we need to send the email so once we have that we can just do the we can give this a better name we just change it to the email so we can just say the ask email to send so this we actually send email so we can just do the face selectly so it's true so that's we send that email for us so while we are using just this simple current site and uh, domain for the site because the current site or the domain of the site is going to be our front-end domain all right so we can't use um, the back-end domain because back-end api domain is going to be hidden all right but for now we're just going to leave it like this but that's not why we are here we just want to be able to send the otp to the user all right so this will actually send the otp to the user method here so we need to import it all right so this we need to import so we're going to import it from utils send codes to user and we have it here so we need to pass in the user email all right 
all right so this is how we we'll send it here so in a production case you can send this email with uh, celery so avoid delay all right so we can use celery to actually send this so this will be a so that's about that so we need to one last thing before we can actually test this at is we need to set up our email configuration so i'm going to be using a uh, major test email you can use google or you can use any other smtp server that's available to you so to set up our email server we just head over to major all right so go to major sign up it is a free account is a test email you can use to test your email and um, if you want to actually send real emails, you have to pay for it. But we're going to be using the free version, which will enable us to test our email. We'll be able to see our email messages reflect here. So once you sign up, you head over to SMTP settings. You come to integration. You just select your platform. Our platform Django. You see, we choose Django. So it will give us our email, who will email password, all that. So. I'll just grab this now and bring it into our settings so I can set it up. So you can't use my already. After this tutorial, I'm gonna actually refresh, reset my credentials. All right, so, all right, so bring it into your settings. I've already bring mine into the settings and I'll just put them in my yeah, environment files. What I added to it was just the default form email. You can set this to any dummy email that you can, that you want. This doesn't really matter. So it's just for dummy testing. So we'll set it to, info at henryresorts.com so this is just a domain email okay i haven't done this what we need to do is just many two things so we can just run migration once we don't run our migration we can test our api through postman so we run python manager by make migrations right so this is making a migration for our one time password so we need to migrate all right so migrate all right so once our migration is done we can actually run our server all right so we run our server so we can try out our api now test if we can create a new user and if our email is being sent let's head over to postman now i'm in my postman now so i'm just going to test by trading your part and the post requests in the body let's just use raw i'm going to send it in json Good. All right, so now we have our credentials. So let's test our API. We have our email, first name, last name, password, and password reset. Our password confirmed, which is password two. So let's quickly send our post request and hope everything works fine. So if we hit post, we are getting 400. So let's quickly check and find out what the issue is. We are getting password feed is required. So it seems something is wrong somewhere. Let's quickly double check. Oh, we misspelled our password to feed. Then let's check if we can get our validation error. So in case we missed the password, and let's just hit send. Okay, we can see we are getting password not match. That means everything is actually working fine. We are getting our validation error as, as as we specified. So let's put in the right password now, and we hit send. What? Oh, we're still getting passwords to not match. Well, our password do match, but we are still getting password to not match. So it seems we are still having error. So let's quickly double check and find out what issue is. We have a little error here. It is my fault. I misspelled password here. So that's why we are getting the error. So let's just correct the spelling. You have to password. All right. So that's that was the reason why we are having that error. So sorry about that. So let's save it and head back and just retest it with a new password. So, so let's hit send. It's going to take some time because it's actually sending an email. Go faster, but we still get an error. So let's see where the issue is coming from. You see, return dictionary has no attribute first name. We are getting that from our account view.py line that 23 in the post request. Okay, it's talking about here. Sometimes it do work like that. So let's just the dictionary. We can actually print out the user this name. So let's actually check because actually failing is a respond here. By twenty-three, you have user is failing there. So let's quickly see if. We have to have first name and saying doesn't have first name, but let's check our email. 
all right our email was actually sent you can see hi john uh, we actually get the first name and which he complained about is actually getting the first name this we can just just take this out this doesn't really matter but we'll see what we are having our response so he was complaining about the first name that we passed in here so we can take this out but we can also check what we are having our, in our user and return data so let's try one more time all right though our email was worked fine we are getting our passcode well, let's try and log in another user all right so let's change the email let's say this is test user 2 to maybe james and this will be all right so we can leave the password say so if we if we send a request now all right we are getting a response so our user registration endpoint is working and we can send verification code so if we check I may try we can see the second verification code was actually sent and if you click on this you can see hi james thanks for signing up all right so we're gonna end this video here in our next video we we'll see how we can actually use this code to verify our email and also how we can generate a jwt token for our user thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up